So last week, working on a ceiling plan, I needed to copy a lighting fixture block to the side, like so. And I needed to change its information so from existing to new in order to change this information. Since this was a block with a piece of text, I have to manually go into the block, edit the text. This was supposed to be a new light and I had to do all of this manually and save the changes. Then I realized I had to rotate my lighting vertically. So I had to manually rotate my light up and then move it. So it's nice and aligned on my ACT. Not only that, but I realized also that my text was flipped and I had to trim many lines over here. So all of these steps were a mess. So I decided to simplify this process and let me go over on the steps on how I did that. Welcome again to another Lazy Show where we show up here each Sunday at 10 a.m. to save you a little bit of time working in AutoCAD. So I'm gonna copy one of those, one of these lights, a block. I'm gonna use the control C and go over here on this brand new drawing and simply paste that. So this is a block that I'm gonna explode to start fresh. So here we go, that's, oops, let's put that, all right. So what I like to do now is one of the first steps that I always do when creating dynamic blocks is to change my objects on the layer or correct layer, in this case on layer zero, right? To avoid any problems in the future. Not only that, but at this point, I like to decide whether I want this to be by layer or by block. In this case, I want my lighting to be by block. Why? Well, because most of the times when we, when I'm working on a ceiling plan, I might have only one light that is new and then the rest existing. So it's useful to be able to simply change the color on this specific lighting block. So that's why I like to have it by block and on layer zero. So once I have that, I'm going to create my block with the B shortcut and maybe call this lazy lighting. You can, or lazy light. That's all up to you. <laughs> that's what I'm going to call it. And then of course, I'm going to specify my base point for my block. So I'm going to pick right here in this corner and I will be able to be here in the block editor. Now, before we continue to address the first problem of the block, which was to change the information quickly, whether this is new, existing, maybe relocated or so on, so we're going to get rid of the text because we need a smarter text here. So I'm going to delete that and I'm going to add an attribute. So in order to do that, I'm going to use the ATT shortcut. And once I do that, I can specify some options like the tag. I'm going to simply say tag for now. And the default option is very important. It simply means what do you use most of the time when you name your lighting? In my case, I use EX for existing. And then also what's important is to have checked the lock position and specify on the screen so you can place your attribute or smart text. Now the justification, it's also important because depending where you place your attribute, I'm going to place it right here on the bottom left corner. So I'm going to pick bottom left and then textile, that's fine. Size, that's fine. I'm going to click OK. So then I can place my smart text or attribute somewhere around here. Now, if I want, I can move it and drag it a little bit like so it's all up to you so i'm gonna place it right there all right so to quickly test this let's go to the test block option right here on your ribbon so and the reason why we do that is because we don't want to start adding and adding uh, some information some parameters some actions to a dynamic block and then in the end realize there is something wrong then you'll have to go to each step and see what is wrong but that's one of the best practices that I found to quickly test things. So over here now, what's gonna happen is that 
if let's say I copy this block right on the side like so I can quickly edit my information now by simply double click on my text and I can say maybe new maybe this is a new lighting fixture and you can see that my other block will stay the same awesome so we solved the first problem oops from our block which was the ability to change the information quickly as needed now look what happened now when i copy again this block so what was the second problem do you remember uh, so so the second problem was whenever we want to rotate our block maybe this light needs to be vertical like this other one and we can see that our text will also rotate and we don't want that so to solve that issue let's see how we can um, add some parameters and actions to our block so let's close our block editor over here we were on the block editor mode so let's close that and now we are back over here to start adding some parameters and actions so to solve the second problem about rotating our block vertically and keep the text horizontally what we can do is add a parameter and the parameter that i like to add is the flip parameter so following instructions on the command line i'm going to specify my base point or reflection line and i'm going to hit over here on this corner next following the instructions again from the command line i need to specify my endpoint for this reflection line and the endpoint is very important so i'm going to activate this tracking uh, setting over here and make sure the 45 degrees is checked so this way i can quickly place my other point at 45 degrees as you are seeing it right now and click now to specify my icon for my flip state if i cannot snap on this reflection line that's fine i can simply place my flip state like so and then i can click and place it wherever i need it all right so i'm going to place it around here like so now there is an exclamation mark over here a yellow one that you are seeing it this simply means that this parameter needs something right and what it needs is an action in order to work correctly so let's go to the actions tab over here on the blocks authoring palette if you don't see it it's right here on your ribbon authoring palette and let's add the action flip right here so once we add that option it says select parameter we're going to select of course our flip parameter like so and then the next instructions is select objects we're going to select all of our objects using the all uh, option and pressing enter but we are going to deselect our attribute using the shift key on my keyboard i will do that like so and of course pressing enter so let's quickly test what we did so far because again this is very important to um, find or discover problems and quickly fix them so let's go and test the block and if we select our block we will see a brand new icon right here and let's see what happened when we click on it boom our lighting block was um, rotated immediately vertically and we didn't have to mess up with the attribute over here isn't that great guys so again if we click that arrow we could quickly now rotate our lighting block now at this point we could also edit our information by double clicking on it maybe this is new and we wouldn't have any problems at all so now let's uh, go on our rcp plan so the third problem that we saw on this block was 
that we will have to manually trim lines when we flip our block and we don't want that. We don't want to manually do anything with our block. We want to make our lives easier, guys. So in order to, to do that, let's go back to the block and I'm going to add a, a param, I mean, a param, <laughs> what I'm talking about. I'm going to add a wipeout. A wipeout is simply a way to hide things or mask things. And I'm going to use that using the wipeout command, of course. And selecting the instructions, I'm going to pick the polyline option because I have already a polyline right here that I can select. And when it asks me to erase the polyline, this is very important. So I don't want to erase this polyline. So I'm going to say nope. And look what happened. The wipeout is hiding everything. I don't want that. So I can simply select my wipeout. And as you can see from the property palette, what I'm selecting is a wipeout now. I can use the draw order command with its shortcut DR and send it to the back like so. So we added the wipeout. Now let's quickly test this. So I'm going to close the blog editor, right? And make sure to save the changes, of course, that's very important. And I'm going to have my lighting like so. Now, we're not seeing the attribute over here because we need an extra step. And the step is to kind of sync our attribute using the ATT sync option. So once we do that, we can select our block and say yes, of course. And that way we can see our attribute like so. So let's quickly test it, right, to see if there isn't any problems with this block. What I'm going to do is I'm going to simply copy with control C and paste it over here. So I'm going to go over here and maybe remove this line. I'm going to paste my new light like so. And let's say I need to copy this light over here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold the control key on my keyboard and simply select the base point and and place it like so. So over here, what I can do is, of course, let's say I need to rotate this. Boom, I will, I will be able to rotate it. And we have a problem. <laughs> Just as expected, we do have a problem right here, guys. Look what happened with the wipeout. The wipeout is not following the flip um, option or rotation. So that's why it's important to test this block right over and over. So let's quickly fix that, guys. In order to fix this, I'm going to go and get inside the block, of course, going to the block editor. And what we need to do to, to do to fix this issue is go into our flip option and we can right click on it and say modify selection set. So once we do that and following the instructions, make sure add option is selected. We can select our wipeout. Our wipeout is right there. You can see the you can see the, the black lines over there. So I'm gonna select that and press enter. So let's close and save the changes. And now our wipeout will follow whenever we flip our lighting like so. So what do you think guys about this dynamic block? Do you think it's very useful or not? 